Hi David, Paul here. Uh, let's do a little quickie um, uh, update you on this log thing. Um, and also information for anybody who wants to do this kind of thing. Um, I have tried a couple of techniques to... Basically I need to thin this log down. It's going to be more like a rustic plank. Um, to make it lighter... So yesterday I did that thing that I, or the other day, I, uh, as I explained, I did that thing where I stripped off the side of the log to let it breathe a bit and, and lose moisture. And I possibly should be more patient, but uh, I'm not. And I, and I need to press on with processing this wood. So what I did is I came back and I have saw, I've made saw cuts across here at frequent intervals and um, then attacked the wood and started chipping it off now normally you know one is used to working with stuff from the hardware store which is much lower quality wood okay so you would just be able to knock those and they would just knock aside but this is this is really good wood this is sycamore wood it's quite dense and heavy and so they're just not easily knocking off. So what, I'm ended, what I've ended up doing is I've ended up chipping away with the axe. So you could say that what was the point of doing the cuts in the first place? So they haven't really assisted much. Okay, I could do more cuts, but that's kind of not what I'm aiming at. Um, it's just more work in a different way. So then I try cutting along, along the log which um, helps in one sense in that it provides a straight line for me to work to so you can see this is not the end of the world it's not the most difficult thing in the world but it's not the most easy thing in the world either so where do we go now well i think what i'll do is i'll return to cutting down the log and forming a straight line that I can at least follow so that keeps me right so I don't overcut. and then the next thing I'm going to do um, I mean if I work to that level of workmanship that's all I need it doesn't have to be right because once I get it back to the col to the cabin then I can work on it in more detail but uh, basically here I need to reduce its weight so taking this off is going to knock its weight down by maybe a third and also the extra uh, ventilation allowing it to dry better is going to reduce its weight as well but this is still this is the slimmer of the two logs the fat one up there I don't think I'm going to process it in that way what I'm thinking of is I may cut it down into short sections like this, this is just an off cut but I may cut it down to maybe three foot sections which I can then take away each individual piece and process it separately and then when I say I make a bench with it, I'll make the bench in cross section rather than in straight lines because that is far too much work unless I use smaller, slimmer trees. That's a possibility. I may do that. I'll think about that. Now, getting back to this. I still want to press on with this and I've learnt a lot here which I will then take to Portugal with me, these ideas. Now, if I think I'm having a hard time with this, uh, eucalyptus wood is going to give me a really hard time so the the best thing to do in Portugal is use the wood as much as you can as round wood not try to machine it down into planks because that's going to be a monster job so select the trees of the size that you want them and process them at le the least you possibly can so going on beyond this area where I did the cuts I then started working on this part which has not been done any anything other than me chopping away with the axe there's a big lump came out there and i chopped that off so if i take a little bit hack at this it's hard to do while holding a camera but if you put puts in at a reasonable angle like that and then cut in the opposite direction the two of them join up together and that seems to be the best method but methodology for just hacking away at it and you can see it works, it's coming away. 
So if if the worst came to the worst, I could just do the whole log like that. Then I had an idea. I thought, on the bed, the front face of this is going to face forwards like a plank. And what you call the figure, which is like the look of the wood as you've cut through it. The pattern that it shows to the world. Um, will show forwards. What goes on at the back is not really that important. So what I could do is I could just take the first, the bit off the front and take off as much as I can and then test the weight of it and see how it feels. And at the moment I can decide that I'm able to lift it and drag it out of here and put it onto my trolley and take it home. That's the moment I need to uh, quit and get a move on. Although having said that, if I take a little bit off the back, that's relatively easy to do because it's a it's a thinner section through there, you know, because that's that's coming out more pointed than this. This is as you go further towards the middle, the more wood you have to get, take away. But then again, the more wood you take away, the lighter it gets. So I may use that as a sort of half round log. I really don't know yet. Feeling this. Man, it's really, really wet. So that's an example of how much wood, how, how much moisture has to be taken out of this log. Now, when I get it home and I start to make a bed out of it, it doesn't matter the fact that it's full of water because it can just dry over time. And so long as I don't set the joints that it makes with other things, then I can trim those later on. And, uh, you know, as, as, the, as the wood, when the wood is finally completely contracted and completely dry, that's the moment at which I make my proper joints, wood joints, with, the, with other pieces of wood. There'll be um, this long, I know it seems long for a bed, but what it's going to be is it'll be a bed, and then there will be a couple of uh, posts here, forming a sort of settee. And this would be like a whole side of the house. So you've got um, a bed in the middle, which you can use as a settee. And at the side of it, there will be like an area which is boxed in, which forms a sort of shelf. And that's that. So I think, I think this is me pushing my luck as far as I dare, because I've only got two months to get, get on with this job and get, get the cabin substantially complete. There are a few shortcuts I, I can introduce in order to uh, speed the cabin construction up and I'll apply those so the cabin won't be completely perfect when I leave but it should be, you know, it should be dry and waterproof and everything I probably won't have the walls fully complete but I'll have the tarpaulins around the edge and I'll have the camouflage on it so it won't be seen and that'll be that um, so I think at this very moment, looking at that log there, I've just made what I call an executive decision, i.e. I'm going to um, cut that up into pieces, which I'll, I will then be able to transport home. And then I can work on them and, and use them for my kitchen bench. I have an idea I call the eternity bench which is a bench which you can just replace pieces on it so that it lasts forever because if it starts looking raggy you just sand it smooth and then you replace pieces and you slide the pieces along up an inclined plane so that you can continually be renewing them but the bench is constantly raising itself as you're doing this and therefore it gives you more material to sand off and it just goes on forever you just have to over the years keep putting a new piece of wood in maybe once every 10, 20 years or, or whatever, depending on how how intolerant you are of imperfections in the surface of your of your work benches. And that's it, it's it's now sunset, so it's time I gotta move on because if you get in these woods uh, late at night, I, I got trapped one night. Uh, not trapped but I lost my way and that was damned scary. Um, because you know if it starts to rain or anything, you could you could die of hypothermia. So best to just work in the daytime. Okay, that's the end of that. One last look at the log. 
and I'll update you later when we get more. So, Atilago, Makita Tayo Sakana, see you later. Jesus be with you.